For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Uh, just reviewing the spot crude trade, and we'll go over the S&P trade in the next little short video. But my thesis, my approach on day one, and how I looked for not only a short trade, but a long trade in the New York Open. So everybody's got uh, different thesis, different uh, instruments that they're following. One of my major criteria is major quarterly levels. 250, 500, double zeros, triple zeros, whatever that is for the instruments. <clears throat> so for traders who have asked, again, um, sweet spots if you're using MT4, it's very simple. I just uh, add a zero for the indexes and oil and gold, okay? And essentially I view that as a thousand pip box. Now we'll talk a bit about more of that in, that in a second. But when I have my thesis in place for my levels, so for example, today I had the possibility, and we'll talk about the first hour opportunity that the market may return to last week's low. But we can see that the 8250 level was where the market locked in the low last Wednesday, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, Wednesday. And so that major quarter level was potentially going to be an area for a bounce, but timing wise, the first hour gave me an opportunity for a short trade off of the double zero. So again, this is the major quarter levels, $90, $87.50, $85, $82.50. And then of course, the previous day's highs and lows, which if you really study these, you will recognize that it correlates with these major round numbers. So although the, are the wicks extend, that comes back narrowing things down even further on our 100 pit box within the day itself. So these are the primary numbers that I'm focusing on with the high and low of the day. When I have my thesis in place, then I am looking at my 100 pit boxes. Now I want to explain something again. A lot of traders have asked me, they still don't understand the major round numbers and and everything boils back to timings, the specific timings in the session that you're trading. So for example, if you're trading Asia, then that 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. New York time window can be paramount for you to be able to have a high of the day, low of the day opportunity if the market is right there when the session starts, as we had several of those pairs today on Monday, taking out the high of Friday at the beginning of the Asian session. Now, I, I really want to reinforce a simple concept here about the rectangle, the box, because a lot of traders are, are still struggling and they're asking me about this. And I, I want to reemphasize why I take certain trades at 25 or 50. 50 and double zeros are my main areas for identifying the best opportunities because when I look at a market that breaks and a previous day's high is up at this, we could draw it at 25. We could call that previous day's high because the market turned at that point and locked in the double zeros on the previous day. The market may push up into that level in Asia and the trade comes off of double zeros. So it's gone back up into the high, the previous day's high. That's the false break. To me, that's the false break that I look for in that session. London could trade up in the Europe Open and resume that move down off of double zeros. So again, 25 to 50 pips is an area where the market may extend when it's expanding the range, day one, day two. So obviously the markets, we, we've talked about day one, we, can, we could be going up. Day two, going higher. Day three, 
and the market may reverse. So 25 to 50 pips outside of the double zeros is where that trade over the three days, three sessions may have failed to work. The same applies for oil, gold, NASDAQ, S&P to me. This could be a thousand pip box approaching the beginning or during the trading week itself. But when I go to a session window, I'm still inside of a 100 pip box. So the market may have come down in that Europe London session it's broken out and it may even go 50 pips and come back inside as we saw on oil today S&P they worked back into the low and came off of double zeros for an explosive short squeeze on day one without taking out the previous day's low we saw the the low reversed on oil uh, S&P sorry and we'll look at that in the short video as well point I'm trying to emphasize is that everything is numbers and timing and now I know there's traders who dislike my approach here's what here's what I'm gonna suggest I don't care what you like I want to make money that's what works for me and I'm not interested in trading all day long I'm interested in going to the screen in that window when they are going to move the market now a couple of my trades my thesis originally was that we were going to revisit we were going to revisit some lows because they broke out of the double zeros, but they jammed it in. So again, when I'm in a trade like that, you know, it should move fairly quickly, which it did on the first level. But I'm also watching for when it trades back into that level to lock something in if I'm wrong, especially if it's in that first hour. First hour will make a high and a low. Second hour may trade back into that low for a revisit back up. We can get a day one now that has not taken out a weekly low or it has taken out a weekly low and reversed. So now we can have a scenario where we have trap volume underneath. So we could have a weekly low somewhere down around that quarter level. They trade down below that range. They break structure and come back out. And now we're day one longs because they've taken out the previous day's high. And we'll take a look at some examples, but the specifically, if you if you master the numbers and the timings, all the trade setups will make sense. So again, looking at spot crude, the low of the month from two weeks ago was down at 82, just again, they locked in 82.50. They traded down all day long. So some traders obviously were had the opportunity to nail the high of Asia and have a short trade heading into the the low of London so again this is a mid move consolidation big move down on Thursday consolidation a breakout of the 100 pip box into the high of the session from the US on Friday and that broke down so some traders were able to execute that 25 to 50 pip breakout above the double zeros for the short trade at double zeros heading into the Europe London session. So again, my thesis was that obviously we had dropped three levels. We were down low. When that session began, I had 82.50 as a potential level. They came down in that first hour and blew vertically through the low in a continuation trade from the London session and then came back up into the high of this session above double zeros. When this market came back down and went sideways in consolidation, when it broke the low of the bull candle, I entered into that trade and continued to enter in as this bear candle closed. Thesis being, if you study Al Brooks, you'll understand these bull candles in a downtrend can be an excellent opportunity to short in a, in a market that is moving down. Again, my thesis was that this had the potential to go down to 81.50, but I recognized that they had already come down and put a low in place in level one, locking in 82.50. That is a major quarter level. So when the market followed through and dropped below 50 in that beginning of the second hour, so again, they started to proceed to go lower when the second hour opened, and they locked in that low 
hitting my trailing stop, out with 25, no problem, could care less. But now my thesis heading into the New York Open changed completely because we're down low. We've moved more than three levels. 82.50 now has bounced. They've traded back down into that, and now I'm looking for the short squeeze setup. We have a low of the day in place. One push, two pushes, three pushes down. Seven minutes prior to the New York Open, a break in structure. The stop hunt into the first mouse. The pin hammer was my entry. The close of the pin hammer, I put a 20 pip stop in. There's no way this should come back. I don't worry about putting it below the bar. It's 20 pips max because this market should should now explode vertically when it op- when it when it trades through that bear candle. So if I was wrong, I wanted to be wrong right away. This market did go vertical. And again, as I mentioned, when a market explodes out of a squeeze, do not counter trend that market, especially when it comes out of level one. We've dropped 300 plus pips from the high of the day. This market had a, a ton of potential to continue to move for maybe three hours, one hour, two hours, and a third hour. That is the same as a one, two, three in the long direction. But again, day one, I just wanted to lock it in. 50 pips. I left a small trailer in, but take the bulk of the money off in case they came back in the second 15 minutes for a stop pump before continuing. I wanted to lock that in. That was a low stress trade. The coil, the the three pushes into that 8250 level, able to lock in 25, able to lock in a vertical 50 out of the squeeze at the low of the day off major quarterly round numbers. Don't sit around, lock it in, get off the screen, keep it simple. Have a great week, traders. We've already had an explosive day one. We're definitely going to have some great trades this week. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.